Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about Lefort 3 fracture in detail. This fracture has got some other names such as high level fracture, transverse fracture, and suprazygomatic fracture. Lefort 3 fracture occurs due to violent force, which is usually applied from the lateral direction with a severe impact. The initial impact is taken by the zygomatic bone, making it a depressed fracture, thereby causing the entire middle third to hinge about the fragile ethmoid bone. The impact of the severe force become transmitted to the contralateral side, which results in laterally displaced zygomatic fracture of the opposite side. The fracture line commences near the frontonasal and frontomaxillary suture and traverses the upper limit of the lacrimal bone. It continues posteriorly, crossing the thin orbital plate of the ethmoid bone, constituting part of the medial wall of the orbit. As the optic foramen is surrounded by a dense ring of bone, fracture line gets deflected downwards and laterally to reach the medial aspect of the posterior limit of inferior orbital fissure. From this point, the fracture line descends and fractures the roots of pterygoid laminae at its base. The inferior orbital fissure constitutes a natural line of weakness from its anterior and lateral end, and on each side, further line of fracture passes across the lateral wall of the orbit, adjacent to the junction of zygomatic bone with the greater wing of sphenoid. Now we can imagine the fracture line separating the zygomatic bone from the frontal bone near the frontozygomatic suture and then it inclines laterally and joins the previous line of fracture seen on the medial wall of the orbit. Hence, the entire middle third is detached from the dense cranial base. Panda faces and raccoon eyes are the appreciable features of the Lefort 3 fracture. Panda faces is due to the gross edema of the face which occurs within 1 to 2 days. Bilateral circumorbital ecchymosis or periorbital ecchymosis resembles raccoon eyes. Bilateral subconjunctival hemorrhage is also evident where the posterior limit will not be seen when the patient is asked to look medially. Separation at the frontozygomatic sutures is seen along with some tenderness at that region. This will produce lengthening of the face and lowering of the ocular level. Patient may also present with orbital dystopia with anti-mongoloid slant. They also present with the characteristic dish face deformity and also in ophthalmos, diplopia, impairment of vision, temporary blindness, etc. The most important sign to note here is battle sign where Echimosis of the mastoid region is seen. Some other clinical features are epistaxis, CSF rhinorrhea, disturbed or deranged occlusion and retroposition of the maxilla. The treatment principles for Lefort 3 fracture are reduction, fixation and immobilization. Reduction. Reduction refers to re-establishment of form, function and occlusion. Reduction can be closed or open type. In closed type of reduction, alignment of fractured fragment is done without visualizing the fractured fragment which can be done either through manipulation using forceps or by intraoral or extraoral traction method using arch bars or elastics. In open reduction, fractured fragments are reduced by surgical approaches. Among all fractures, palatal fracture should be treated first. Fixation is done to retain the reduced fracture fragments in their normal anatomical position for proper healing and also preserves blood supply. Frontolateral or frontocentral suspension is recommended in Lefort 3 fracture. Here, hole is drilled 5 mm above the frontozygomatic suture. Immobilization It is done by retaining the fixation devices for some time, which can be up to 3 to 4 weeks for mid phase fractures. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair. Thank you for watching.